Prize Picks is offering a free square for Christmas, meaning that you get a guaranteed win. It's a great deal that drastically increases your chances of making up to 25 times your money. Sign up with my code NBA Goober to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Link is in my description. Sup, dude? Merry Christmas. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have the vertical leap of a sloth. I'm six foot four and I've dunked about one time in my life. If I had to guess, my vertical is probably eight inches. And so is something else. <laughs> Just kidding. My ding dong is extremely small. Anywho, as I was saying, my jumping ability is that of an obese rabbit. So when I see someone who can jump out the gym, it really impresses me. One guy in particular really blew my mind with his dunking ability. That guy is none other than Lana Rhodes' baby daddy also known as Blake Griffin. No disrespect to current Blake Griffin, but dude used to be a fucking beast. In his prime, he was one of the most explosive athletes the league had ever seen. His dunking ability was mesmerizing. The way he would explode into the air and punch the ball through the hoop was jaw dropping. Standing at six foot nine, 250 pounds, the man was a force to be reckoned with. If I was an NBA player standing under the rim and saw that huge slab of meat coming at me full speed, I am getting the fuck out of there as fast as I can. Cause I don't want my future wife and kids seeing daddy on a poster with Blake Griffin's hairy ball sack on my forehead. Blake has put countless people on a poster in his career, my favorite being the infamous dunk on Timothy Mozgov. It was quite literally one of the most disrespectful dunks I have ever seen. He levitated up, grabbed Mozgov's head, making it look like what can only be described as fellatio being performed, then chucked the ball through the hoop. It was incredible. A close second to that dunk would have to be the one on Kendrick Perkins because of how vicious and quick it was. Prime Blake Griffin was a dangerous man with many talents. While he was a spectacular dunker, that wasn't his only skill. For being such a large human, his ball handling and passing ability was very good. He dribbled smoothly and found his teammates with accuracy. The combination of his elite slashing, smooth hand and unselfishness made for a deadly result. Coming into the league, Blake wasn't like other rookies. He came in and immediately started dominating. He averaged 22 and a half points, 12 rebounds, and four assists his rookie year, which earned him an all-star selection and rookie of the year. And he also can't forget that he won the dunk contest by jumping over a car. Well, kind of jumping over a car. In the following four seasons, he averaged 21 points, nine rebounds, and four assists, being named All-NBA and All-Star each year. Despite all this success, there was one aspect of his career that wasn't going so well. Blake and the Lob City Clippers just could not seem to do well in the playoffs, despite being a good team. They got bounced every year. After 2015, Blake was plagued with injuries, missing the playoffs in 2016 and 2017, eventually getting traded to Detroit after the Clippers decided to blow it up. This is where Blake completely changed his game. He wasn't charging to the rim at full force and yamming on fools anymore. He turned into this playmaking stretch big and was dominating. I'm guessing he realized with all the injuries and the fact that he was getting older, he had to make a change to his play style in order to succeed. He earned his final all-star nod in 2019 after averaging 24 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, five assists, and he shot seven threes a game at a 36% clip. It was mind boggling to see the drastic change in his play. That season, he only had around 40 dunks, which was very low for him. For comparison, during the 2012 to 13 season, he dunked 202 times. And between the years 2010 and 2014, he had 784 dunks, which was more than anyone else in the league. He switched from dunks to threes and he was really finding success with it. Sadly though, the success did not last that was the final year of Blake Griffin being a star because once he turned 30, he was never the same. For the last few seasons, Blake has regressed into a veteran role player searching for a championship. I hope he's able to get a ring because the dude just had terrible luck in the playoffs and I'd like to see him become a champion even if he's just a role player. Blake has played 14 games with the Celtics this year, averaging around six points, four rebounds and an assist. About half his shots come from three, shooting 34% from there. And actually about two weeks ago, Blake was feeling springy and came very close to murdering Avicii Zubats. It would have been sick if he actually made it. I'm glad he's with the Celtics because they have a really good shot at making the finals. Speaking of the Celtics, after I posted that video I made on them, they have been absolutely terrible. And if you remember, in that video, I jinxed them. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, I am a witch, and if you need me to curse a certain team or player, let me know. Okie doke. Since his career is coming to a close, I thought I'd make this video to show everyone that Prime Blake Griffin was undoubtedly one of the most exciting players to watch, and I wish more people would give him the credit he deserves. As you guys know, the Clippers play the uh, Lakers tonight. DeAndre. All right, that's it.
click here to watch my last video. It's about Zion. Hope you enjoyed. Bye, dude.